Hey fellow music fanatics and songwriters, uh, this is Ari Koinuma for AriKoinuma.com and today I wanted to share with you my analysis of the Beatles classic Nowhere Man and I'm gonna look at it from four different points of view that go, or four different elements that go into making a song impactful. One is songwriting, arrangement, performance, and production. So we'll look at all of those in a you know, sort of a sequence to see what goes into making this such a memorable classic song. Okay, first of all, in the songwriting, uh, the notable thing about this song, of course, is that the refrain or the hook or chorus starts the song. And there's no introduction, there's no verse, it just comes right off the bat with the most memorable hook of the song, and that's what really captivates us about the song. It's, it just uh, hits you with the, the big gun right away. And it's, it's a very methodically laid out phrase, this chorus is. I'll play it for you on the guitar and you can see how it goes. <laughs> So what you notice about that main melody is that it starts out in one place and it jumps up right away to the next chord tone and then comes down in stepwise motion again and then jump So that jump to stepwise motion uh, pattern is used three times and that's part of the reason why it's just so memorable is that there's a rhythmic and sort of a intervallic or you know the distance between the notes you know that ha follows the same pattern and then when that pattern is reinforced and again and again that you know really sticks to your ears and also there is a uh, same also motion in terms of the direction that the notes go when you're considering a melody uh, when the notes move up, you know, that's the building or lifting of the energy, and then when it comes down, it has the more sort of a settling feeling, right? So this this is kind of like a wave, so it goes up and then down, up and then down, and up and then down, and that's just uh, three phrase, and after you hear it once, though, I mean, you just, you just remember it, right? You just want to sing along, and that's just a brilliantly made little chorus there. Now the chorus to this one uh, is fairly straightforward up to a point. It, it, it goes from E. He's a real nowhere man Sitting in his nowhere land Making all his nowhere plans for nobody So right at the end, so it goes from 1 to 5 to 4 These are all standard chords in major key but then at the end it goes into minor two key, uh, two chord, and it goes into minor four, which has this sort of a sweet, bittersweet, melancholic sound in a major key. So although the, st the song starts out, you know, predictably or traditionally in that major chord or in the major key, it's not entirely like a happy song. It just kind of goes along in a happy path, and then at the end the chorus goes, well, you know, there is something that's just insecure about this guy and that is again a great match for what the lyrics is really about right and that theme is also carried out into the verse because the verse goes to this uh, G sharp minor in the key of E which is the three chord and the three chord is a minor chord in the major key going up to the four which was minor before but this time it's a major right no oh, well, man, please listen. You don't know what you're missing. No oh, well, man, the world is a joke, oh, man. So that three to four repetition, you know, the, again, the focus is so much on that minor chord there, and then going up to the four chord just has this sort of a sense of longing, you know, the 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 chord moves up a half a step. And then it just goes from this place of fragility and insecurity to going, you know, oh, there's some desire for something better. 
and just notice how that is just such a eloquent match to what the song is really about which is you know about this guy who's kind of staying stuck in his comfort zone and really not uh, living the life that he's meant to live and uh, apparently John Lennon was really talking about himself when he wrote, uh, thought about himself and how he felt at the time when he was writing this song so that's part of the reason why it doesn't come across as really condescending or judgmental because uh, you know for example isn't he a bit like you and me you know that's a line where he sort of pulls back from the observation from the third person point of view and say oh actually it's about us right and you know again another part he, another part he says no more man you know the world is at your command you know, so that's tapping into the sense of power that the nowhere man is really not tapping into. You know, if you come out of your comfort zone and the safety zone and just live the life to the fullest, then you have so much more that you can experience from, uh, in life. But then um, the song is about, you know, somebody who's really not doing that. And that sort of a lyrical point of view is also perfectly reflected in the construction of the song. Alright, so next let's talk about the arrangement. Um, the most notable thing that you notice right away again is that when the chorus kicks in in the beginning, it's a cappella, there's no band attached to it. You know, so when without the distraction you, you have nothing to listen to except uh, three voices singing the first two lines of the refrain and you know that just sort of focuses your ears to just that main element right but then it's also a curious thing when the band chooses to come in it comes in at the third phrase of the first refrain and I think that there could have been a choice to just wait until the second half or the second time around of that refrain comes in to kick in with the band but the band kind of comes in sort of without any fanfare without really drawing attention to itself and I think if if the band had chosen to come in with the second time of the refrain, it would seem you know more a sense of arrival and it would be more dramatic. But I think instead, what they chose to do was to just sneak the band in, so that you don't even sort of recognize that the opening phrases are a cappella, and you know the band all of a sudden just shows shows up without you really noticing it, and it's just a much more subtle and understated approach that really sort of a underscores again the more mundane you know boring kind of existence of no more man you know the song is not really dramatic up and down it's more of a steady sort of a pace kind of song right and then if you look at the band's arrangement there's really not a whole lot going on because again the the band and producer George Martin um, knew where the style of the song is which is in the vocals so they just have a pretty spare band arrangement the guitar is just playing you know pretty plain chords and the drums the Ringo is doing just you know regular rock beat thing if you listen to uh, it though uh, the bass is one notable exception is that you know Paul is playing steady eighth notes but note wise he just goes all over the place and it just has a really driving feel to that song uh, that is really much needed. I think if Paul too laid back a little too much, then the song would just really lose momentum and just, you know, would not keep our attention as much. Uh, but being, you know, the leader that Paul probably was, you know, his his bass part is a little bit busier and is more assertive and really drives the song forward. And then also notice the um, lead guitar is the only other element in the arrangement, and. But uh, it's not a busy part, it's really just like a response to the call of the vocals. And note, you know, I mean, this is trademark uh, George Harrison, and I, I know that John Lennon played the solo there too, but it's just, it's like a vocal melody, it's just very hummable and very minimal, and it just kind of comes in and fills in the gap. So the point is that the arrangement here, the key is to be understated and let the star of the uh, show really just take the center stage and not take anything away from it. Their three-part harmony is, you know, we think of Beatles as, you know, a stellar vocal ensemble, but 
In fact, they don't do this sort of like a stacked chord kind of three-part harmony that often. It's not something you hear in every single Beatles song. They, a lot of times they sing along the same line in unison, or they might have like a ooh-la-la-la going on in the background, which it does in this song as well. Um, but we just listen to the sound of them, the three of them singing together in the same chord. Um, and it just has this blend and it just has massive sound and it has a very sort of almost an otherworldly uh, sound to it in terms of its bigness. And I would say that that really contributes to the notion or impression that this message of the lyrics being something really universal. And if this was just like one guy singing uh, to about Nowhere Man, you know, that would feel more personal or intimate but at the same time, it will seem like a one man's opinion, and that could just that that you know that has less of an impact in terms of supporting the argument that this is something that could be just you and me, that could be anybody, and having three of them sing it together and create this massive sound delivering the the words together, it just has it legitimizes it legitimizes the argument that's presented in the song. All right, so in short, The Beatles No More Man is a really just lean and efficient pop little ditty. And they knew exactly where the strength of the song was. And they just held everything back so that the strength of the song can just shine through without distraction. They just start right away with the you know best part of the song and they keep the band to a minimum so that people are forced to listen to the words and to the melody. The melody sort of has a similar pattern, repetitive figures to it, so it sticks to your ears. And they have these three guys singing together, which really reinforces and legitimizes the argument presented in the song. And uh, all that going on in you know less than three minutes or so, it just uh, really proves how efficient the Beatles was and you know as a songwriter myself you know I, I when I look at that I'm like wow you know that's just like trimming all the fat and leaving the best bit of a music and just letting that be your statement and, and there is certainly something to be said about that you know I tend to just get longer and longer and longer <laughs> when I write my songs and that uh, I always have to be cognizant of, you know, okay, don't don't make up, don't extend stuff for the sake of ex extending, you know, it's just filling up air with some noise isn't necessarily art, you know, where this is. You just sort of trim all the fat and then you just have the essence and three minutes and boom, you remember it the rest of your life after you hear it the first time. So to me, this is like a textbook songwriting of rock and roll and pop music and that uh, you know we can take something away from it. Yeah. Alright that's it for today. The written version of the same analysis on my website at arikoinima.com so if you're interested you can go there and check that out and that uh, I have other articles on music and about life and different insights that I bring and my own music as well so I hope you come and visit us. If you have any other thoughts or questions let me know in my comments and I'll catch you next time. Thank you.